For too long, we have been prodigal with our natural resources. We have taken from the land, but rarely have we put back. Of course, man needs timber in all its many varieties, but it's man's responsibility to replace before despoilation of the landscape gets out of hand. That's what this nursery of stripling trees is all about. On the edge of Cannock Chase is the coal board's Lee Croft Nursery, the largest of seven, with 20,000 trees growing on a 100-acre site. Three men work full-time at Lee Croft, tending the young trees and nursing them through their first five or ten years of life. You can't grow trees overnight. The seasons must change many times before a sapling comes to maturity. Today, they're replanting young trees grown elsewhere. Soon, they'll be raising them from seedlings at Leecroft. These trees are grown, of course, to be transplanted where they will beautify an otherwise somber landscape. So the root balls are kept compact. As in any garden, the grass between the rows isn't allowed to get out of hand. The growing saplings are groomed and watered. until at last they're ready to start on their journey to their new home. Leecroft is well placed for speedy access to the motorways. This load heads off north to County Durham, where the young trees will be established to screen a coal preparation plant. The Coal Board has pioneered the transplantation of trees, large and small, throughout Britain to screen industry to beautify cities. <laughs> Here, in London's East End, near the famous Stratford Theatre Royal, six lime trees have been given by the coal board to embellish a plot of land outside the primary school. So the local kids are out in force to give a hand. So are the theatre folk, including Joan Littlewood. These trees will grow up with the kids who help to plant them, and they'll stay on to brighten the lives of future generations. To some, a tree is a utility. To all of us, as it grows, it's a symbol of living beauty. This is Denise Cochran of Mexborough playing Dracula's victim in a mining industry safety film. As a specialist in the occult, Denise is something of a quick change artist too, or so it appears. But come behind the scenes and we'll let you into the secret. Denise is just one half of the Cochran twins, Denise and Avril. Being twins, they've both got beauty queen status and they both do spare time modeling as well as working as typists by day. Uncles Jack and Charlie Wraith work at Manvers Main Colliery, one of Yorkshire's biggest. Uncle Harold's there too keeping coal and supplies moving. The world of high fashion is where the twins have set their sights. 
At nearby Chatsworth, they go through their modeling paces. In front of the cameras, as well as behind their own, the girls have shown themselves model performers. In the safety films they've made for minors, who can wonder that any man would look twice to make sure all's secure before getting on with the job? What's the common link between the crown jewels, the asphalt forecourt in the Tower of London, dry docks, motorways, bridges, and solid smokeless fuel? The answer's coal. Not coal in shiny black lumps, but liquid coal. Coal tar pitch. When coal is heated to make coke, we make a whole range of byproducts as well. One of these, and the most important, is coal tar. And we make more than a quarter of a million tons of it a year. 84,000 tons of that turn up at the coal board's tar distillation plant at Caerphilly. Here, the crude tar is separated into a variety of different oils and an important residue, pitch. From the pitch, a whole new range of products can be made. In the laboratories, fresh uses are being explored all the time. For many years, pitch has been used as a waterproofing coating. Today, with the addition of other ingredients, it's used as a protection against highly corrosive chemicals. To prove it's as good as they say it is, the coal board protect this furnacite plant in South Wales with it. Chemical corrosion was once a problem here, but not now. Here, anthracite pines are loaded in at the start of the process. Here comes that pitch yet again. It's mixed in with the anthracite to act as a binder. Then pitch and coal are pressed into these familiar shapes, which go on to the coking ovens to be heated to rid them of volatile matter and to make them smokeless. After being heated to 900 degrees centigrade, the finished phanocyte rolls out of the ovens to be cooled down and sent off to the domestic market. In the process of carbonization, there are three products. Solids, the phanocyte. Gaseous, gas and ammonia vapor. Liquid, coal tar. And from this tar, more pitch is produced to recreate the cycle yet once more. In all its many forms, coal tar pitch is helping to protect both the new and the old in Britain today.